a more efficient way to gauge the amount of carbon stored in Singapore's forests, mangrove par mangroves, parks, and even gardens. The Singapore Land Authority and NUS have signed an agreement to use geospatial data to do just that. This is the technology used to make high-resolution maps. To tell us more, we have Dr. Victor Koo, Director at the Survey and Geomatics Division at SLA, and Professor Ko Lianpin, Director at the NUS Centre for Nature-Based Climate Solutions. Gentlemen, welcome to the programme and thank you for joining us. Uh, first off, uh, Prof Ko, let me begin with you and explain it to us, if you will, so that we can understand better. What exactly is geospatial data and, and how is it different from the data that SLA currently uses? Well, um, th thanks for having me tonight uh, uh, to begin with. Uh, geospatial data is uh, uh, the data with containing uh, spatial information, so basically location data. And uh, in the context of what we're discussing today, we're talking mainly about uh, SLA data, uh, geospatial data collected from airborne laser scanners and uh, aerial imagery. Uh, which are very powerful because they allow us to create a high resolution and high fidelity the digital versions of the forest uh, right on our computers, uh, what we would call a digital twin of the real world. Uh, Dr. Ku, I'll stay on you here. A geospatial data using airborne laser scanning and uh, aerial imagery versus satellite imagery. What is the difference here? Uh, and I presume geospatial data is more accurate, more efficient, so that we can capture the smallest, say, for example, of Singapore's parks. So thank you for having me. Uh, first, uh, let me give a brief background of uh, the collaboration between SLA and NUS. So both uh, SLA and NUS have been uh, working together to leverage on each other's expertise to support sustainable development effort in Singapore. So both also recognize that there's a vast possibility of using uh, geospatial data and technology uh, that will support uh, deeper insights into environmental changes. So in our case, uh, the geospatial data uh, that SLA will be sharing with NUS is gathered through airborne laser scanning, or we call that a LIDAR technology. So this is captured uh, from about 1,000 meters above ground. And this laser scanning data, uh, this laser scanning technology emits hundreds of thousands of laser pulses per second to capture the physical environment. So because we are flying at a height of uh, 1,000 meters, so it's very close to the ground, and we can get higher resolution uh, data, both uh, in point clouds as well as in imagery. As compared to uh, satellite imagery, which are captured on board a satellite uh, about 500 kilometers in space, and the resolution of such uh, satellite imagery data is relatively lower than the airborne imagery laser scanning data. Mm. So, Professor Ko, this is exciting uh, technology uh, that you and your researchers are using. I mean, in regards to those images that are capturing, how are your researchers actually uh, using that data uh, to tell how much carbon there is in our forest? I mean, it, could we use an X-ray as a comparative in terms of, of how doctors take a look at, at an X-ray of, of a human body and, and, can, and can kind of diagnose what's going on? Yeah, I think that's actually quite an apt uh, analogy. Um, as I mentioned before, the airborne laser scanning data that SLA, SLA has been collecting and are now available for NUS to, to analyze uh, can be seen as a, some kind of a, a digital twin of, of the real world. And with this digital twin, we can now automate the measurement of potentially every tree in Singapore on our computers without ever having to step foot into the forest at all. So this saves us a lot of time and effort. And using SLA's data and building on the scientific models that the Center for Nature-Based Climate Solutions that NUS has been developing over the last two years, allow us to estimate and monitor carbon stocks in Singapore. For example, uh, we might find that forests in Singapore are not all the same in terms of their carbon density. In fact, our hypothesis is that the Older forests in our nature reserves, especially those in the central catchment, uh, would contain greater amounts of carbon per hectare than the younger forests in other parts of Singapore. 
We are also interested to know how much carbon is being stored in the trees along our roads, our parks, our park connectors and, and gardens, uh, because perhaps these trees outside forests are also important for carbon storage and sequestration. Oh, thanks to both of you for joining us. That was Dr. Victor Gu from SLA and Professor Ko Lin Pin from NUS.